Good evening, everyone. I'm going to try and uh, dismantle this somehow. Let's give that a whirl. Move it over here. I wasn't intending to do this presentation as a wing commander, but um, it's a bit cold, so I'm going to go with the warm attire. I hope you'll uh, bear with me for that. Uh, I am, uh, for my sins, general manager of Fishhead Magazine, Wellington's Magazine. I uh, hope you uh, like it or have seen it, and if you don't, then you can tell me later. That's no problem at all. Uh, we actually have a few copies of our latest issue uh, for your, uh, hopefully, as I say, entertainment uh, following this evening, and I'll be on a table guarding them and handing them out and hopefully making sure that everyone gets one that would like one. We certainly hope that you would do. Um, okay, well, uh, my talk is, uh, is about breath. You'll see that in a second. Uh, please don't stop. Okay, we're okay. Uh, I've done a couple of these talks uh, before. I have to uh, do that in the full spirit of, uh, of uh, disclosure. Uh, the first one was on my toast rack collection, which was about oh, 12 months, a bit more than that. Oh, thanks. Well done, Andrew, yeah? Keep doing that, wonderful news. Um, and that was, uh, yes, as I say, about 18 months ago. I've got 35 toast racks in my collection. That was the first one. I did a second one about six months ago, which was about mayonnaise. Another one of my favorite things in the world. Thank you, same lady, that's great. Um, so, in the spirit of continuing this, what I've done now is put together a talk about bread, another one of my passionate subjects. It's a very, very wide subject to try and cover, which is why I've shied away from it. But as this, you know, has a food, well, it's on a plate theme, I felt somewhat like I should go for it. So anyway, sorry, uh, thanks, and uh, we'll get going and see, see what we can finish. Okay, well, I, uh, as I was growing up, thought I was a, a, really, uh, you know, a relatively normal chap, but it turns out, this is a quote from my mother, Mrs. Ado, who said that you must be the only person in the, in the world to eat sandwiches before and after dinner. I thought that everybody did that, at least in the 1980s, but, but, but perhaps they didn't. Well, what I did next was to get an idea of what I did eat, and this is during the, the early 1990s. As you can see here, lunch, uh, that was either two pies or two lasagnas, my discretion at the, uh, the school canteen, uh, and the reason I can't donate blood in New Zealand forever, because of the big content. <laughs> Dinner was a healthy meal prepared by my mother, a wonderful cook, and a purveyor of a very healthy foods, as I say. <laughs> However, against this was my sandwich consumption. There were multiple people had nine sandwich meals every single day. Three for breakfast, two for pre-dinner, and two for after dinner. I called that the, uh, the buttresses to the dinner meal. And of, and of course, the supper. And those were actually a loaf of bread, a whole loaf of bread a day, in addition to my two main meals. Uh, this is an aside, as you can see, you can count things like bread quite easily, nine sandwiches a day, which is why I think, in my opinion, uh, food eating contests normally involve some kind of bread-based things, hot dogs, uh, burgers, I don't know, no one ever, you know, go over, we'll go over here, Jeff, how many grains of rice has he eaten? Oh, I don't know, a lot, a lot of grains of rice. This was going to be titled Douche Wrong because that was a vegetarian sausage eating competition. Terrible thing. Oh, look, and this is a recreation, this is the 1980s, and this is my mother shopping. There's some, there's some healthy food, but on top is a lot of bread, and that's to satisfy my insatiable hunger for bread-based foods. Uh, as you can see, Nicole Kidman was, was uh, representing my mother. That's because she said she would only be represented by someone amazing. And look, uh, it actually wasn't her in the picture. I, I added her, so uh, she wasn't there. But I can tell you, if you walk around New World Supermarket at 11 o'clock at night trying to find a woman to pretend to be a mother, a mother in the 1980s, you're going to get nowhere. Which is what I did, not even a chap. Uh, but if you're a single woman, you can find men, only men at that time of night in, in New World. Things used to be a lot more simple, as you see from my mother's shopping cart. In the 1980s, there was only bread, sliced white, bright or bright, white or brown. And uh, in my parts of the world, barn cakes, or you may have called them cobs, or tea cakes, or baps, or buns, or something like that. But nowadays, things have changed. You know, you can have cornbread, chili bread, garlic bread, I don't know, German bread, Turkish bread. You name all your bread, soda bread, I don't know, lots of kinds of bread. Nobody knows what's going on anymore, but I've counted them all. There's at least 35,000 kinds of bread these days. What is a man or woman to do with that? I spend hours sometimes in more Wilson selecting my next loaf. I'm getting carried away, so I've gone for a definition of bread using Wikipedia. That's a staple food prepared by cooking a dough or flour or water and often additional ingredients. It goes on to say lots of things that are particularly interesting. It's boring, it's earnest, and I thought I can do better than that. I could create my own definition of bread, and then uh, we would be a lot more excited. So I did, it's much easier to swallow. Anything which later would be delighted to have is the outside of a sandwich. <laughs> so you can use that. I imagine myself a bit like Hansel and Gretel's, but more savoury flavoured at house. And I'm sitting there, and bakers are walking in, and I'm there very earnestly, and they give me the bread, and I'm, mm, yes, you have bread, my friend. 
Go, prosper, bake that bread. Uh, you'll be fine. Oh, yeah, so um, I moved on to, I'm getting carried away with myself and bread. A traditional thing, I've done this before. Look, I'm best told bread doesn't have to be. I have a long shelf life, hopefully. I'm afraid of knives, bread just loves being cut. And I'm voracious in things uh, including bread, life, and you know, other pursuits, whatever you want to say. Bread, on the other hand, is common, whereas I am, you know, a fine stock, you can tell, wing commander. Easily shared, whereas there's only so many ways you can pull me. At least I like to think so. I'm happy, happy in a sandwich, bread is that, that is. I don't want to be involved in a sandwich cannibalistically or, in fact, erotically. And I'm multi, bread is multi ethnic, whereas I am white and a little stale. But look, we share some things, we're versatile, we're easy to suggest, we're needed, or needed, you know, bread needed. And of course, we're both popular with housewives. Uh, I don't know, some of them, maybe. But bread is, maybe not so much me. But this is not a frivolous matter, this is serious. This is a real poster from the Second World War, and this is urging us to save bread because bread is precious, bread is good. Bread is a force for change in the world, and we can defeat evil people, like, for example, the Nazis, using bread. <laughs> bread is a good thing. But, but people, there's a new face of evil in town. <laughs> and that is gluten. You better be careful, this shelf is expanding, and with apologies for people who do have celiac disease, one in two hundred of the New Zealand population, we're getting a bit carried away with this whole gluten intolerance thing. So I thought I needed to do a couple of things. One was, of course, to eat a lot of bread. The 14-day bread diet. As Jesus, I'm not a religious man, said, or when he was breaking the bread, which went on to symbolize uh, something or other, it was a good thing. He didn't say, let's break the, I don't know, rice bran crackers or the you know, <laughs> wheat-free whatevers. Bread is important and a force for good, as I said. So what I did was eat the 14-day bread diet. And here are my meals, 42 in a row of bread-based products mainly. There were some other things as well. And you can tell a few things. For example, I have a yellow tablecloth. I eat out quite a bit. But people said, is this going to be a problem for you? Are you going to struggle? And I said, it's like a goldfish, you know, being given a bigger bowl with more water in it. Would he complain? No, because he loves water and I love bread. In short, I enjoyed it. Some statistical facts. Meals eaten now, 52%, 22 out of 42. Types of bread, 11, you can count them all there. Evil multinational fast food chains equals one. Hopefully you didn't see it. But the important thing is that the weight at the start of the diet and the weight at the end of the diet were 82 kilograms, exactly the same. Bread is a good thing. And as you can see, although I'm padded rather, still very spelt. But it's well on a plate. So I got to eat some bread in some places I consider very wonderful. Look, Munchenberger, go there, it's on Cuba Street next to Logan Brown. That's great. KK Malaysian, Sweet Mother's Kitchen, Fidel's and the mighty, 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 mighty with their toasty sandwiches, the final meal. In conclusion, bread equals good, but more accurately, bread times mayonnaise plus toast rack equals happiness. <laughs> Thank you for putting out the my talk on bread. Enjoy a loaf, share it with people, and have a wonderful rest of your volunteer